So much continues to happen in the world of politics. And now, today on this particular edition of CSA Brigade, let's look at some of the developing intriguing issues therein. Of course, after the August 2022 general elections, we saw some winners and casualties therein. Let's look at some of the notable names that really deserve much of our coverage in here because a number of you are requesting that we look at what probably the future portends for them in the world of politics. My name is Richard Mwenjo. Always a pleasure to have you on yet another exciting edition of CSR Brigade. And with me, as always, is none other than the man most of you love, dressed in an African theme, as is his norm, a man born Manyora. Great to see you. Good. Just like Nindi Nyoro in an African theme shirt, you're saying, you are an African and Africa is your business. Uh, <laughs> the boy is smiling all over the corridors of State House. He's ripping where he saw, literally. Of course, of course, of course. People are saying that probably they don't foresee a, a Gashagwa presidency. But Why? Dindi Nyoro's presidency is one that is literally sparkling all over the place. How so? It's possible. Why are they saying... Who would have known 10 years ago Ruto would be president? So Dindi Nyoro can be president. I will wish him the best. Mm -hmm. He's a Kenyan, he's a young man. Mm -hmm. he, he can be president. But then how do you explain the overconfidence in him other than the sitting DP who is Gashagwa? People seem like he's the potential person to be a president even way before Gashagua probably ascends Who to that seat. Who Gashagua would not also want to sit in that house? That house is good. When you pay a visit there, you wish you could be there as the occupant. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So it's an imposing uh, uh, address. That residence, anybody would wish to be there. So who tells you Gashagua would want to go home? Gashagua is a young boy. By the way, in, uh, <clears throat> when Ruto believed in Gashagua would be my age, Exactly what I am today. I still stand chance. A young boy. I can do 10 or 15 <coughs> years of presidency. All right. So Gashago will not be old. He'll be my age. Unless you are saying now I'm too old to be president. He just might be. I'm Your 10 years bit. younger than Raila. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, perhaps so in 2027 you're putting up a spirited yeah, fight yeah. against Ruto. Raila is 10 years my senior. I'm Gashago's senior by 10 years. All right. So who tells you Gashago will leave it to Nindinyoro? And being deputy president and you are ambitious, you accumulate sufficient mm. resources, not just money, people, connections, international and local, to go for the presidency. Human resource. And Gashakwa is a very, very, very ambitious guy and very forceful and powerful. Mm -hmm. Who tells you leave the seat for another person? Time will tell. Let's delve into Correct. today's conversation. We have seen uh, just way before 2013, the person who was the closest rival and probably a worthy competitor to William Ruto, the current president, was none other than the former MP for Chepalungo, Isaac Ruto, who later on became the governor of Bomed, but right now he was defeated by Hilary Barchok, Barchok actually. Yes. Now, people are asking the question, who probably is going to ascend to power from the Kalenjin community? They have always seen now Ruto is the de facto kingpin of the region. Some are already rubbishing away uh, potential Gideon Moy. Now, now that Isaac Ruto is off the radar and also Gideon Moy, yes. is there likely to be another person from Kalenji in politics who is going to fit in the shoes of William Ruto probably after the next 10 years? You know, politics is not linear. Mm -hmm. Like I've said, who would have known Ruto would succeed Moy? He was not on the list of people who are supposed to be potential successors of Moy. To Moy. So today, if you are looking at who can succeed Ruto, that is too far. Ruto is active, unless you are saying something could happen to him but because he's a human being. But uh, it's not easy to say who. It can even be his own son, Nick. Yeah, or June, the daughter. Regional, regional kingpinship? Because you think of things, if you are thinking of Isaac Ruto, mm -hmm. then you are thinking in the same way we thought after more it will be Franklin Bet, Cheriot, Salikoske, Henry Koske. Koske. That's what, we, what everybody thought, but they never became. <laughs> so, looking at it in terms of it can be Isaac Ruto is, is not understanding politics properly. Politics doesn't work like that. Is there a wiggle room for Gideon Moi to take over? Of course. Moi is a prince. I've said he's a prince and he can surprise you tomorrow. How about with the current uh, sort of wave of people wanting to send dynasties at home? They saw labeled dynasties. Will they be ready for their comeback? I'm not convinced, but again, I could be wrong, and how I wish I'm wrong. I want to see Ruto deal with the dynasties. I'll be very happy. 
<laughs> if I want to see, I'm waiting to see. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting a program, lest you forget, Mr. President. I'll keep reminding him that the dynasties are still around with us. The cartels are still with us. Those who have held state cap at us at capture in state capture arrangement are still with us. In power brokers. Do you if and how will Ruto deal with dynasties and yet he's one of them now? He's already a dynasty because he's president. Because he was attacking these people because they are children of pres former presidents and former vice presidents. Now he's firmly one of them. So he should begin by dismantling himself. Uh -huh. To pave it, way it, it never works like that. All right. Yeah. But <laughs> the people to destroy dynasties where Ruto is one, mm -hmm. it will not be politicians. The dynasties, especially in as far as they have held this country captive and created economic stagnation, the people to deal with the so-called dynasties will be the people of this country who will drive them out of town in the fullness of time. And I heard Uhuru mention it without knowing it. He said we could be fermenting a revolution. If Unga reaches 400, 500, as it could, the people of this country will send the dynasties packing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Unlike the former president Uhuru Kenyatta, many people really acknowledge that uh, the current president, William Ruto, has always had a nose for politicians who always have whoever, uh, and whoever in support for him or actually those who can firmly stand on their decisions over time. Then again, the question here comes, when you look at some politicians from the North Rift, where he comes from his bucket, the likes of Joshua Kutuni, and now people like Zedekiah uh, Buzeki, Bundotich, and, and so forth, people have always been in their flip-flopping, especially for Joshua Kutuni and so forth. For them, if they want to have a comeback in challenging politics and probably get their rightful place in Ruto's government, do you think with Ruto, the person who always goes for loyalty, will be willing to welcome them with an open arm this time around. I mean, one of the tasks that Ruto must face is to bring the country together. <laughs> what better way than bring your former enemies close to you if they want to come? So if Buzeki wants to work with Ruto, Ruto should welcome him. But if he feels he can't trust him, close to him, then that is again his own problem. If you are talking matters to do with now with the people like Zedekiah uh, Buzeki, we've seen in North Rift, people are going for politicians who are firmly affiliated with either UDA or the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition, any other independent candidate or other who hold different views like the, the likes of Swarup Mishra from Kesses, whenever re-elected into, in, into National Assembly and so forth. Now, for particularly Ruto's backyard politics around North Rift and the larger Nandi divide, do you think come 2027, should Ruto still be going for the second term? Do you think that time round Kenyans from North Rift will embrace anyone who is outside the block of Kenya Kwanzaa or that coalition where Ruto is firmly the head? It is not the first time for this to happen, mm -hmm. that people are elected on just one party. It happened in, in 1992, first multi-party election. In the four-year four, four year silly zone, mm -hmm. the late J.J. Kamodo, famous Kanu Secretary General during Moist time, mm -hmm. he said even a dog would have been elected so long as they are on a, on a, on a four-year seal. So it's not the first time. No place for merit? No, it was anybody on four-year seal, even a dog would have been elected. That's what JJ was. And it's true. The riffraff we saw in Parliament, riffraff, so long as you are on four-year seal. That happened. So it can happen now. The question you are asking, will it be reproduced in 2027? Rarely does it happen like that. <laughs> People take stock. They sober up. They look at the excitement and the things they were thinking will come their way. They have not seen them. <laughs> if you ask about the border, each, each, about the border boys, each one of them thinks they will get a free motorcycle. Not to pay for <laughs> So it will not be coming. From the Asla government. Yeah. Mama Mboga, I was in the village the other day. People are just waiting for money. So, ah, Mungu yetu ametuwa mukia, I ask one woman, how much do you think market you broke? What do you people think? And the others chipped in. Mm -hmm. Another one say we should be given 50,000. No, no, no. Are you a person mingi? To the part 200,000. Another one was more realistic. No, season what one more got to keep power 20. Mm -hmm. Now, can the government get that kind of money? And what is more, many of the people think they'll get this money just anyhow. Just anyhow, no. that you just go there, stretch your hand, 
50,000 is put there. No, there must be structures how you get the money. Mm -hmm. Money is not just given like that. For example, you need to maybe to be in groups or make a formal application through a bank or whatever. It must be assessed and blah, blah, blah. Table so in the all. process, in short, many people will be disappointed. So yes, there, will be an, there may be enough people to re-elect Ruto into office. Mm -hmm. That's more likely. But with the euphoria, much, much reduced. So that people like Michelin you are talking about, Kenya Joshua Kutuni, can now come back to parliament. All right. Yeah. If you analyze the politics in between 2030... And Buzeki, my friend, I must mention. Actually, you know, Jonathan B actually uh, was the... Uh, actually... Kotimoja. Yeah, Kotimoja. He's now the current governor of uh, yes. Uasingishu. He barely beat Buzeki. Not by way of numbers, by way of what happened. That state house, Nakuru state house visit, mm -hmm. finished those independents. Do you, are you trying to say that still Buzeki has a chance in getting of, the governorship of Eldoret? Buzeki is a young man. And he, he has resources and young. He was, the, he was the most popular candidate. There was this stupid meeting that happened in state house, Nakuru. Mm -hmm. And Buzeki didn't attend. But all these independent candidates attended. And then rumor went wild. That Uhuru has called these people... He has given them money to finish UDA. And then a few days later, Ruto made a tour from Nandi. Kak, he was, that was the end of those guys. All of them. Can I get tell, Terrell, can I Kucha. That's how politics works. He still stands a chance. Ah, Buzeki will be governor of, of, of Washington. 2027, he'll get. He's young enough to go even 2037. Even 2042. He's not an old man. All right, time will tell, sir. We are looking at uh, analyzing the political landscape between 2013 and actually 2022. For the last 10 years, if you are looking at Mount Kenya politics and the personalities therein, we've also always seen the flip-floppy nature of Mount Kenya politicians. And it is all thanks to Ruto. He tried to really keep politicians from his side challenging together. But on Uru's side, we always saw people flip-flopping from one coalition to the next one. This time around, it is Gashagwas, the DP, who is supposed to bind together Mount Kenya politicians who are under the Kenya Kwanza coalition. Do you think... The personality that is regarding Gashagwa will be able to sustain all Mount Kenya politicians within the next four years in Kenya Kwanza, so that we don't see the second or the third year from now people like Nini Nyoro moving out, the likes of Kimani Shungwa stepping in, and all that uh, confusion that has always been orchestrated by Mount Kenya politicians. It is too early. Mm -hmm. What is obvious is that there is a vacuum in Mount Kenya leadership. Kibaki, Matiba, Jomo Kenyatta, Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. There is a vacuum. And as is the norm, somebody will occupy that vacuum. Gashagwa may have a head start being the deputy president. It depends on how he plays around. But Gashagwa must also balance things, not to be seen to be overshadowing William Ruto. You know, he must play it safe. In the process of playing it safe, you could also create room for another person. There's Jimmy Wanjigi, remember? Huh? Mm -hmm. there, is, uh, there are these other politicians. You have mentioned Dini Nyoro yourself. So it is too early to tell. All right. Yeah. This is the first time, uh, probably in the last 20 years, whereby we have seen northeastern politicians, or rather northeastern region, being firmly at the center of Aruto's government. If you look at the likes of Abdi Kadir, Mohamed, Bill Okero, and a number and Dwale and all the governors from Ali Roba and such, they in Kenya Kwanza coalition. Now, if you're looking at the future of Northeastern politics, number also resource endowment in that region, resource governance, and also their voice in government. Do you think this time round they will not have any other excuse that the government has always sidelined us? They have the requisite numbers, they have the capability to probably bring forth a Northeastern president in the near future, or they still so much needs to be done for them by the government so that they get the, that voice. Northeastern are people who are always with the government. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were blue. They were as me, all of them. Even that senator's robber, not governor robber, is top, but still, mm -hmm. we can refer to him as governor if you wish. Mm -hmm. The new senator of Mandera. They were all in Azmiyo. That's why I know this one was blue. Because of Uhuru and because they thought Raila was obviously winning. Mm -hmm. So they have decamped because now they like being in government. The question you must therefore ask yourself is, has being in government ever changed their fortunes? And that's my question. Since it hasn't, can we therefore hope that it will this time? We just have to hope. They should fight. They should fight. With devolution, 
they should fight, use devolution to develop northeastern, mm -hmm. northern Kenya, and also fight to ensure that the national government does more than it has done for them since independence. All right. Yeah. But if you're looking at succeeding Ruto probably after the next 10 years or even five years, if you look at northern, in northeastern politics, so many people have confidence in Aden Dwale. Could we see a potential northeastern presidency in the near future of Kenya? Uh, outright, Dwale doesn't appear to me to be presidential material. But politics is a game of surprises. Mm -hmm. uh, so he can be. Mm -hmm. I've said, more, I speak more for Muslim. I think a Muslim president to me is something that we, are, we, will, we should be experiencing sooner than later. Muslim presidency? Yeah, not necessarily northeastern, not necessarily mm -hmm. Somali, but Muslim. Muslim. And that's why I thought if Joe had well packaged himself well, he stood a very good chance. Oh, Farah Malim, perhaps? Farah Malim, no, I think he's not that ambitious. All right. Uh, Duale could be ambitious, but not very presidential. Or even Mahat Somani, probably. Um, yeah, Mahat is a young man. <laughs> young men are also coming. Let me tell you something else. <laughs> we are here talking about 2032. <laughs> Ignoring that the world is changing at a rate we can't even understand. The Kenya of 2027 may be a different world. It may be such a different world that most of these people we are talking about will be trying to find their way in Nairobi. When I shikwa mkona na vijana. The likes of Duale. The likes of Manyora. They may not find their way in Nairobi and in Kenyan politics. Uh -huh. The world is changing so fast that 10 years from now, any of these players in politics uh -huh. may have no space. Toto could even be now the kingpin in Kalenjin politics. It, it, it could be anybody. The world is changing so fast. All right. This is a generational change moment. Mm -hmm. And the change is going to sweep a lot of us off and create room for younger people looking at the world differently and so on and so forth. All right. Well, that point by Haman Manyora takes us to the wrap of this conversation today on CSA Brigade, talking matters politics, the future of Kenya's governance, and also matters to do with the post-election the major election that was done in this year's August election, and also matters to do with now Aruto's presidency, the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya, and what Kenyans should expect, not just in matters welfare improvement, but also general governance in terms of democracy and so on and so forth. Until next time on CSA Brigade and also on Business Glide, my name is Richard Mwanja. See you then. <laughs>